Hi everyone, I finally finished putting together all of my experimenting on the 74 watt hour battery mod for the ROG Ally and how we can make it safer and lower the degradation rate as much as possible. When you get the battery, it comes with this sticker on the point that would be above the RAM chips on the board. My testing found that it literally does nothing and can even be potentially dangerous. For my testing, I used two of these temperature probes. This has the ability to measure the temps at two points at the same time. I calibrated it to room temperature and tested it on boiling water to make sure that it's reading correctly. One probe was placed directly on a RAM chip and one was placed on the battery, just off to the side of the RAM chips, and this was in between the battery and whatever shielding method we were testing. In my original testing I used a RAM benchmark tool to hit the RAM and give a worst case scenario. You can see that in my original reddit post where I had to actually stop the test early because the battery was getting above 60 degrees and higher than I was comfortable with letting it get to. In my second round of testing where these results come from, I used the benchmark from Monster Hunter Worlds and let it go on repeat until the temperature stabilised. And each test began with letting them am I idle and uh, stabilise at that temperature. Let's look at the RAM results first. The RAM chips of the Ally are rated up to 80 degrees Celsius, and for none of these mods did the temp actually come anywhere near that, so the RAM chips are fine. These are the acceptable temperature values for lithium batteries. The higher you go above 35C, the faster the battery will degrade and the closer you get to 60C or above, you start getting into dangerous territories. The aim of our mod is to get the battery to a safe temperature, but the lower we can get it, the slower it's going to degrade. Looking at this data based on the world's benchmark, you can see how high the 74 watt hour mod gets in comparison to stock. You can also see how the stock battery is still high above 35C and this is why these batteries degrade so fast. You can also see the results of the various methods of shielding I tried for the 74 watt hour mod. I tried varying combinations of materials, but the plate on its own gave the best results. Our aim is to get the battery temp as low as possible. The plate method is what got it to the lowest and the air gap decreased it by an extra degree. Let's cut the plate to size first. You're going to need a sheet of aluminium that's 0.5mm thick. I'll have all the materials I used, all the tools, in the description below. Our plate needs to be 250mm long and 40mm wide, and that's just slightly smaller than the battery. We can mark that out on the plate using Sharpie and Ruler from the edge of the plate. Now we can cut along the lines we made. I used these cheap set of metal shears that I bought on Amazon. They make it really easy to cut the plate, but you can use any method you want. It should look something like this when you're done. You want to bend it flat if it got out of shape while you were cutting. The edges don't need to be completely smooth, but if your cutting method does leave a few jagged edges, it may be worth sanding these down, but it is not necessary. Once we take off the plastic film, it's ready to stick to the battery. To create the optional air gap, you can cut four strips of plate that are 40mm long and the width of your tape. You want them to be evenly spaced out over the battery, and when you put the double sided tape on either side of the strips, you can stick the plate to them and then to the battery. For the easier method, we just need to add double sided tape to the plate and stick it to the battery on the side with no text. The tape that I'm using is just some regular double sided tape. Make sure it's the thin kind, as we really don't have much space to play with inside the ally. Make sure you can see a little of the battery around each edge of the plate before you press it down. Now let's prep our front shell for the install. There are two posts on the inside of the front plate that we need to trim. There is one here that we need to trim flush with the posts around it, and also the square one here.
On the inside of the backplate, the battery only actually sits above the speakers and the RAM section of the motherboard. The rest is just plastic, so we don't need to insulate anything down here. Just drop the battery into position and gently press down to make sure it's seated properly. Now we can plug in the battery. Just press directly down on the connector to make sure that it's in and then push the metal latch down. For the backplate, I highly recommend getting an aftermarket shell that doesn't need cutting. There are many options such as the RGB plate from JSORT and you don't need to modify this to make it fit. However, if you want to use the stock backplate, there is quite a lot of trimming that we need to do to get it to fit with the new battery. I've coloured all these areas in black here. All of these areas need to be flush with the base of the backplate. You can use some regular snips for this, but I imagine a Dremel tool would make it much easier. It should look something like this when you're done. Now just place the back plate on, click it into place and reinstall the screws. The mod is now complete. I would highly recommend charging it up all the way and then discharging it to zero to calibrate it. Even if we do that, there have been reports of these batteries degrading insanely fast or not reading the right charge level. Keep in mind we don't really know who is putting these together and where they're coming from, so there is always a chance that your battery is going to be dead on arrival. Just keep an eye on it once in a while to make sure it's not swelling or there's nothing weird happening there. Just remember that installing this mod will void your warranty, as we are cutting into the front shell. Thank you for watching, if you want to see any other tutorials or mods, have a look at my Maker World page where there's all of my mods, other ally and other interesting projects and knickknacks.